This is about to be a grand undertaking. Hi, everybody. What the, what the f is this on my shirt? Um, this is about to be a grand undertaking because, man, the way I, I would have done this video like a couple years ago would have been super edited and, you know, like, we would have really, like, had to lay everything out behind the scenes all for a long time to get it all, like, perfect and whatnot. If you go and look on my channel, I actually do have tier lists because, spoilers, we're doing a tier list. I actually do have tier lists. Uh, from a long time ago when I had like a whole different editing style and all sorts of stuff. But today, yes, hi, it's editing pineapple. I, I know, I know the first five letters of the alphabet. Uh, I know, A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm, my, my name literally starts with F, so I know them. They're out of order. I did two hours of recording. They're out of order in the, 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 the tier list. So I have F before E. It, it just makes me look dumb. But... I'm just editing pineapple, letting you know that I know them. We are going to be talking about the most or least useful characters in My Hero Academia Season 7. Let me see if I can close that ad. So I think this is pretty much everyone who appears in Season 7 or is going to appear in Season 7. We're going to rank them from S, Pivotal, A, Substantial, B, Useful, C, Small Role, D, Useless, Literally Not There for F, or E, Made Things Worse. So we're going to choose these characters and I mean, All Might and All for One being at the top is kind of charged. So I think I'm going to start from bottom to top and we're going to just go one by one explaining why I think a character was either useless or they made things worse or they were actually like the most important character in the entire war arc. And I guess we'll just, yeah, I feel like this is, I mean, since the war just kind of ended and I, I know season seven isn't going to cover everything that we got in the manga but since the war just ended in the manga and you know the season's ongoing why not do this tier list and also i told myself that i would do a bunch of season seven videos and i haven't i think i've done like one so far so bear with me this is this is one of them all right so starting at the bottom of the list vlad king vlad king were you even this might be an insta literally not there vlad king were you even around I'm trying to remember what Vlad King's contribution was. Did he give someone blood at a crucial point? See, I, I am developing as a content creator back in the day. I would have just sat here and just based everything on memory. But today we're using the phone. All right. I'm going to look this up and save you the time with editing. All right. So apparently Vlad King was there during the fight of all the pro heroes and the trainees versus all for one. So I think that was... Was he there, I guess, during the Gunga Mountain Villa? That That's where he is? Okay. So, Vlad King, I'm sure you did something. But until I, like, properly remember something that you actually did, like, if you were just fighting against a bunch of Nomu or fighting against a bunch of villains, I mean, sure, you, you did your job. L let's put you in... I mean, you played a small role. I barely remember that you were there, but I'm sure Vlad King fans, you, you, you know every second that he was on screen or in on a manga panel you were super excited i could tell because he gets no screen time anyway the big nomu i think the big nomu literally not there right am i crazy was the big nomu involved at some point now i'm feeling like i'm actually old i don't remember this nomu having any presence in this arc maybe it's just because the arc like went on for so long and it did something earlier on but I don't remember it being there, so we're not going to go with that. Uh, Bubble Boy. Bubble Shield Boy. I, I, You were probably just somewhere doing something. I'm putting you in useless, honestly. Did you? No, wait a minute. I feel like you did something. I feel like you did something, actually. Did he save someone in the Shinso area? Is my brain just completely making this up? I think he saved someone in the Shinso or Ashido and Kirishima area. He... He might have done something, right? We saw him, so I'll put him in this small role. But it feels kind of crazy putting him next to Vlad King when, like, I barely remember him doing something. Well, I feel like I'm imagining what Bubble Boy did. I'm calling him Bubble Boy because, of course, it's a 1B student. I'm not going to remember his hero name. Uh, oh, Chaco. Okay. Now, here's where we can actually... We don't have to skim through Ochako. I mean, Ochako, she was there. At the beginning of the war, of course, you had Ochako teaming up with Suyu and, and I guess Deku to fight against Toga. And then she kind of carried on fighting against Toga for quite a while. I mean, she was able to send Deku away and tell him like, we got this. So even on that level right there, she's going to be at least in the useful category because if it wasn't for Ochako, Deku would have had to like 
he would have had to sit there and uh, now I got to fight Toga. I don't really have anyone I can trust here to deal with this. But because Ochako was there and because Froppy was there and they were pretty sure that they were going to be able to handle it, he was able to start flying immediately towards UA. And I mean, thank God he got there at the exact moment that he did. So really, just off that, Ochako was at least useful. But she she makes a, I'm going to argue, a pretty substantial contribution because not only does she chase Toga down and through the portal to the Gunga Mountain Villa, not only does she just fight in a giant swarm of Twice clones, right? And she's just battling all these Twice clones, getting injured, getting punched, getting just like looking for the real Toga, being able to find the real Toga just from her mannerisms or, or that she's crying. I mean, Ochako was kind of in her bag in this final arc, I would say. And then I suppose being able to reach out to Toga and actually, I mean, I mean, Ochako's kind of hard-headed, right? I mean, for most of the series, she wasn't really understanding what Toga was trying to get across to her. So I like the fact that after their last battle and after she saw Toga crying, she had that reflection that we actually recently saw in the anime where she was like, you know, realizing all the stuff going on of Toga and trying to find out what her answer is going to be to Toga when the time comes. And I feel like the way that Ochako in this arc goes about listening to everything that Toga has to say, goes about trying to explain to her that maybe she doesn't relate exactly and she does relate in other ways, but just everything that she did, all her, her talk no jutsu was amazing against Toga. She was taking like stomach stabs. She was taking really, really gruesome injuries and she still managed to, you know, not really bring the dub home because I, I guess she kind of lost her fight per se, because Toga ended up pretty much fine, while Ochako was laying in a puddle on the ground, clinging to life barely, but yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Ochako, if not a pivotal, if not pivotal, at least substantial, she at least played a substantial role, because, I mean, there's a lot of things that would have fallen apart if she didn't hold her own in the way that she did, and then she came together with all the other girls in the class, and everything to take Toga, I mean, come on, she, she deserves to be an A, so I'm going to leave her there twice. I mean, twice is gone, but when you consider the role that he actually did play in this arc, you know, I can't put him in literally not there. I mean, he did make things much worse, but he wasn't useless. Uh, Twice is interesting. We know, of course, that Twice, you know, passed last season, so he wasn't really there. So it's really more so Toga using his blood to use his quirk to have him back in a way right and we do get i guess the shock value of having twice back and i'm gonna say he does play a pretty big role in the arc considering the amount of damage that he does i mean he spreads across all the different battlefields he's really oppressive towards all the other heroes i mean he, he jams up a lot of their i guess the well-oiled machine that is their plan right so twice even though he's not alive post-mortem through toga he actually does play a pretty significant role in this arc I'm going to I'm going to put him in useful, though, substantial. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to put twice in substantial. Uh, I think I would definitely put him in useful because he was extremely useful for the, the villain side. Right. But, it, you know, you didn't really need twice there, per se. Right. Sure. The the villains numbers would have been much thinner without twice. But I mean, at the beginning of the war, we did learn like how outnumbered the heroes are just without twice. So I feel like he wasn't completely necessary. I do love the fact that he was included, obviously, but he, he was very useful. So I'm going to put him in B, the useful tier. Next, we have Froppy Suyu. Where would I put Suyu on this list? Uh, okay, so Froppy, when I try to think back to her presence in this arc, she was there with Ochako during the whole, we kind of just went over that right against Toga. Um, she did lend a pretty big helping hand to Ochako during that fight. So much so that Ochako made sure to bring her along in the portal over to, not Jakku, um, Gunga Mountain Villa. So that was great. And I love the friendship between Ochako and Froppy. I mean, them supporting each other and then extending that, that kind of like, that, that safe place over to Toga to give her kind of an example of like, it, this is what your life could be like. And if we kind of like stop all this villain stuff, maybe there is a better way, or maybe there is a better path for you forward after you go to prison and get rehabbed and all that stuff. He might've almost died like once or twice against the twices or uh, no pun intended really. But yeah, I'm going to say that Froppy was definitely, hmm, it's in between useful and small role. But if I put her in useful, it feels weird to have twice there. 
You know what I mean? Because Twice definitely played way more of a role in the arc than Froppy. But it's like Froppy, she played way more of a role in the... No, I can't even say that either. I was going to say she plays more of a role in the contained story that her, Ochako, and Toga are in. But Twice is in that same story, right? Like, Twice is also in that little narrative world that they have going on. So, I'm going to put Froppy in small role. I feel like I might want to change that a little later on because I, I she, she she didn't play a substantial role, but she she was very useful. Um, but I'm going to leave her there for now because I'm not really comfortable with moving her next to twice because I feel like I want to kind of set a standard for B. A is a little hard to get to, but again, Ochako did a lot, even leading into this arc. Um, we had this Pussycat Dolls member. I don't remember their name. Chatora, Chatora, Tiger. That's what his name is. Okay. So we have Tiger. Tiger's role, uh, I mean, honestly, come on, man. I barely remember if you were in the arc at all. I know it's a, it's going to be a meme at this point that my memory is just bad. But, I mean, there's a lot of characters in this list that I do remember them having a role to play in this arc. And I think Tiger, Tiger actually makes the case for me to just add a new tier. And I'm going to be honest, this tier, this tier is going to be the I literally, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. It's not even like a grade or anything. I don't remember, Tiger, if like what role you played in this arc. And I really don't feel like you were supposed to play a big one. So I'm sorry. Tokoyami, though, that's a completely different story. Tokoyami was cooking in this arc. You you can't deny that Tokoyami. So we have Tokoyami being sent to Gunga Mountain Villa, right? Because they have this whole plan beforehand that they spell out with All Might and everything because they realize that All for One, he's able to take the quirk from a person, but he has to make physical contact with them first. So this means that a character like Tokoyami with a quirk that can literally just like, it's energy that comes from his body is actually a really good counter against All for One, especially if they're strong enough and capable enough to actually keep up with them in that fight, which is something that we definitely see Tokoyami doing in the match against All for One. Not only first when he goes along with Jiro to break All for One's mask alongside Endeavor and Hawks, and he was pretty helpful in that battle, even though he needed to get saved. But as the night went on, sorry, I don't like having two headphones on, you know, psychology stuff. As the night went on, though, we did see Tokoyami start to get in his bag way more. We saw the giant Tokoyami uh, with Dark Shadow kind of collaboration that they had going on. That was doing some pretty significant damage to All for One. Then we had Kami come and make an illusion of the night sky and Tokoyami started going even crazier. He was doing just Baldur's attacks and all sorts of crazy stuff on All for One, doing significant damage to him to the point that All for One actually rewinded quite a bit when Tokoyami attacked him. I mean, compared to a lot of other people's attacks, it just seemed like he aged a lot more from the attack that he took from Tokoyami. And Tokoyami was really in that moment, honestly, on the battlefield, kind of the beginning of like the reversal of the way that things were going in that battlefield, right? Things were not going too well for the heroes and the trainees in the Gunga Mountain Villa, but then Tokoyami, you have him get giant, then like, you know, the Shiketsu students get in there and everyone is able to kind of concentrate on all for one because he's running away from this giant bird demon looking shadow it was awesome, and I love seeing that from Tokoyami because very early on in the series, I put him at, like, the heights of one of the, the tier lists, and I remember some people being like, Tokoyami at the top of the tier list, you have him like S tier with, like, Deku and Shoto and whatever, but Tokoyami is him. He's just that guy, and I'm glad that Horikoshi, I give Horikoshi a lot of, a lot of shit, honestly, I, I gotta be real, I give Horikoshi a lot of shit for not being able to do battles greatly or not being able to focus on certain characters and stuff like that. But I can't lie. I can't lie at all. He did cook with Tokoyami. So shout out to uh, Horikoshi. I'm going to put Tokoyami. I almost want to put Tokoyami as the first pivotal, but I'm going to make him substantial along with Ochako. Tokoyami played a massive role in this arc. And if it wasn't for him, I feel like everyone in Gunga Mountain would be dead, right? Like, everyone that was on that battlefield would have been wiped away. And it's really only by the grace of, like, another character that he didn't really go on, like, a quirk plucking fest, but we'll, we'll get to that soon. Then we have Tetsu, 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 Tetsu. You know... You know, I don't really remember you, Tetsu, Tetsu. <laughs> this is gonna be a pattern to Google. Okay, Tetsu Tetsu, you were also there for the Villa Raid. Uh, wait a minute. 
that's something different. That's the war arc. I don't, and I actually, it doesn't say what you were doing during the final war arc, which I find suspicious. I feel like I remember you stopping rubble falling from some, that's where you were. You were with the Todoroki family in the escape pods at some point, right? Didn't you and Kendo save them from some falling rubble? You did something. That, that at least saves you from being in the don't remember category. You did something. You were not literally not there. You didn't really make anything worse, I can imagine. I think you were kind of just after whatever battle you had, if you even had a battle, if you weren't just defending the evacuation pods the entire time. I think that Tetsu Tetsu just kind of was chilling, right? Like you can't get too close to Dobby's heat because you would melt. He was in danger of melting probably before anyone else. I mean, well, no, metal, flesh. It really depends, I guess. Um, and if I remember right, he, he handled the small little moment that he got. He got a more heroic role in the final arc than a straight up battle one, right? Where he was actually doing something good, right? Like just saving some people from little, uh, little worms that all for one planted in the evacuation system. So I'm going to put Tetsu Tetsu. You're not useless. You played a small role. I'm putting Froppy in useful because, again, it feels crazy now to have Tetsu Tetsu, who I just think saves someone with like a piece of rubble you know, or, or from a piece of rubble or something. It feels crazy having him next to Froppy, who did more, you know, just factually did more than he did. Then we have, uh, man, I, I just never cared for this character. I don't even care to know your name, to be honest. I don't remember... No, I, I don't remember you. I'm not even going to act like I remember you. I'm not even going to Google to try to figure out where you were from. Whatever you did in this final arc, keep it to yourself. Just like that quirk, keep it to yourself. Even All for One wouldn't steal that quirk. Star and Stripe, though. Star and Stripe, again, from one extreme to another. Star and Stripe starts out, you know, she appears at the very beginning of the final war arc. Really kind of in the prelude to the final war arc because we have the traitor arc in between the Star and Stripes versus Shigaraki battle. But Star and Stripes comes over from America, obviously trying to meet up with All Might and meet up with the heroes and try to get a lowdown on the situation so they can go against Shigaraki and All for One. And then All for One obviously felt that that wasn't something that he was going to allow to happen because, you know, you have New Order and One for All together. Really mysterious and awful things could probably happen to you and your plans. So even though, I mean, she did a good job fighting against Shigaraki, even though it was kind of ultimately moot because he didn't get the quirk and she kind of died. Even though she did die against Shigaraki in that battle right? Sure. She was still pretty useful, significantly useful, I would say, because not only did Star and Stripe buy them time, right, with her battle against Shigaraki and injuring him and having his body have to reheal all over again after the war arc, not only did she buy them time, but she also got rid of several of his quirks or like a, a significant number of them, not too many that we know the name of, but I think Reflect was gone because of her. I wish she would have got regeneration or something else, but whatever. Um, so the time, the quirks that she got rid of, and then also later she comes back and she pretty much guides All Might or gives All Might a vision towards the center where Tenko is and kind of like provides a clue of that last little fragment that she has to where that is. So I guess that's number three. Actually, that would be number four because number three would be her ripping open the path to Tenko in the first place, right? Like doing so much damage to all for one, I guess his vestige or the fuse Shigaraki or whatever being they were at that time, doing so much damage to him at that point that like, yeah, there's a path open to where Tenko is and he actually sees, I guess, number five. He actually, she showed Tenko, there's potential here. There's hope for someone that's gonna come back here and try to save you. You just have to picture in your mind being saved, right? That it's possible. And in your mind's eye, the person that you think is probably going to save you is probably going to be the one, right? And we obviously saw that Tenko thought of Deku and you know how that all went because now the story is almost over. But yeah, Star and Stripe just played a, a, she might be the first pivotal. Mm, is that Cap? Is that Glaze? Pivotal, mm, Star and Stripe, pivotal. I mean, without Star and Stripe, yes, the heroes would have been massively underprepared for that final war, but I don't know that All for One would have just had Shigaraki going out and seeking Deku at the school. I know that was their big fear that Shigaraki using the search quirk was going to go to the school or attack them wherever they were, and they weren't going to be able to decide the, the pacing of the attack. So Star and Stripe really did 
create a situation that allowed the traitor to be revealed. She allowed a lot of... Yeah, she's going in pivotal. What am I talking about? Why am I arguing this? She is going in pivotal. All right. Stain, the hero killer Stain himself. Now, Stain, if I remember correctly, last time we saw Stain in the anime, that was during um, the prison break, obviously, right? Like he broke out of prison, one all for one and all that stuff, you know, was going on. Um, and then we saw him meet up with All Might again, where he gave All Might some documents, which were actually useful for All Might's suit, I believe, and a few other things. And more than the documents, he gave All Might back his sense of heroism, right? Like his sense of, you need to still be here. There's still something you can do that even if you're not capable of going big buff All Might form and doing all this stuff, like you can still do it. There are still things you can do. And if you can't do it, Mr. All Might, Mr. Big Hero Man, if you can't do it, then like what hope do any of us have? So you have to stand up. There's still people like the woman on the statue or whatever that are still like here for you or they see you as a symbol of what they're here for and what they need to protect them. So you can never give up on that, right? Like no matter how much you want to die, no matter how much anything, you can never give up on that. And I feel like that was a really powerful message. And I really like that it's Stain delivering that message to All Might because we've been waiting for those two characters to interact the entire series, right? And I thought it was going to happen with All Might going to the prison and to visit him or something, which was a great theory in my head for a long time until it ended up just not happening because Stain broke out of the prison. And actually there's a moth that just flew in here. I'm gonna try to ignore that because it's gone now. Um, until Stain broke out of the prison and actually went to All Might. So my expectations were completely subverted. But then you do have a, a brief section where while All Might is, I mean, he's pretty much at the point where he might die to all for one, Stain does get involved in their final battle and he, he plays a little bit of a role, like he keeps All For One from killing All Might and he sacrifices his own life to do so because that's just kind of the stakes. I mean, All For One, it seems like he takes the gloves completely off when it comes to like villains or other adults. He was pretty kind to all the students and all the, I mean, some of the pro heroes in the war arc by not just like eviscerating them. But Stain, I'm gonna say, you were not useless. So yeah, I'm, the bottom half of the list is not for you. You, you were useful. You were useful. You contributed. You contributed more than Tetsu Tetsu or, Bl or Vlad or Bubble Boy or anything. You did contribute. You helped All Might out. You're part of the reason he's even still alive anymore. And really, you were able to bring your character arc to completion in a, in a, in a way that I really liked, honestly. And I love that for a character that was around from season two. I mean, to be able to be paid off all the way in season seven and have their character completed in a nice arc not every, not every character is going to get that treatment right and, and i like how horikoshi for the most part handled a lot of these villains throughout the series and how their arcs concluded in the final arc really overhaul i feel like is one of the ones that i don't like because we kind of got like bait but maybe he's on this list and we'll get there spinner oh man okay well spinner i really didn't like the the mutant arc like it was just boring to me like i understood the message behind it um, it was an arc that I felt like, or at least a portion of the story, because it's not really an arc, it's in the final war arc. It was a portion of the story that I feel like we figured would come at some point. Like, we're going to have the mutants and the mutant revolution, and that's going to explore, like, the inner darkness of the world on a certain level. And I feel like that stuff was entertaining to me. Like, the content of the arc itself is not bad, I think. I think what I don't like about the arc it's just like, and, and this is a problem that I have with Horikoshi a lot of times, well, really in the second half of the series, is it just feels out of place. It feels like it's placed at the wrong time. I'm getting too, way far ahead of myself, I guess. So Spinner. Spinner starts this arc by being in a cave with All for One, worrying about Shigaraki, actually trying to be pretty much the only advocate for Shigaraki in the room because Dabi doesn't care, Chikazoku doesn't care. Um, So shout out to Spinner for that. W man's for spinner and but then he gets his mind more or less taken over by all for one right like he gets given quirks that make him kind of just like Godzilla then he's made the face of this revolution that he's not really even like on some levels he's not really even down for right like he's really turned into a puppet in this final arc in a way that I just I found very sad I found very tragic and that's what Horikoshi was playing into obviously having spinner be quite a tragic character in the end when you when you look at everything 
he really just ended up being used. He lost his best friend. He lost pretty much everything in the only family that he's known. And it's hard to say whether or not those issues of mutant quirk based racism in the world of my hero academia are going to be handled in any sort of like true way you know what i mean like the characters like shoji and stuff they, they have opinions on it and they have stuff that they want to change but i think part of this epilogue definitely at least maybe like part of a chapter or something should be dedicated to letting us know like how that's handled i mean spinner kind of suffers from a lot of stuff going on like in the series like how the anime kind of cut out some of his scenes or move them out of place but i do think in this final arc as far as how useful he was, he is the reason Kurogiri is free. I mean, him, him along with President Mike, but he is the reason Kurogiri is free. Even though he is a puppet, even though he's just an icon of All for One within the mutant liberation movement, he was still able to bring people together through being used, right? Like, even though he is not the, the leader that you would want to be following because you're not actually following him, you're following his boss, just through being used and being, I guess, the spokesperson or the face of this movement, he was useful in that way, right? And he did lead the charge. I mean, he, he, he did stuff. And if I guess if I'm grading for the villains, he was useful for the villains. I mean, ultimately, getting Kurogiri out was one of the most useful things anyone on their side could have done, especially if Kurogiri would have behaved and acted the way that they expected him to but i guess that's when we get to kuragiri who i can see here on the list yeah if it wasn't for the fact that kuragiri didn't end up working the way that they expected him to work I, I feel like spinner's contribution to this arc would be way more uh useful i'm not gonna put him in useless literally not there small role is kind of weird but useful i feel like is a little too no useful because you freed kuragiri if i'm thinking about on the villain side yes useful because you did free kurigiri okay spinner all right i'll allow it so now we have chikazoku my sorry somehow snap will like taste dry oh, you heard my voice crack damn um I, I don't like doing this like i feel like it's such a nerd when you put your glasses on like this but it's such a habit like I'll, I'll put it up any other goddamn way chikazoku the gorilla's reference you had a role to play in this arc. You you got a little busy in this arc now that I think about it, right? Shikazoku, you were in your little cave doing your hacky hacks. You were hacking all sorts of shit. You were you you had like your your spy satellites and all that stuff going on. I mean, that was cool. That was cool until you got hacked by La Brava. And then after that, you kind of spent I'm trying to think. You posed a little bit of a problem. You were of minor annoyance, I feel like, during this arc. Because in the beginning of the arc, you, you were kind of running rampant on the UA security systems and the evacuation pods, I believe you put in danger. And you did a couple things and you were organizing a lot of the communications between the... Damn it, because I'm making you sound way more useful than I really feel like you were. But you did enable a lot of the communications between the villains and you, 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 did, you did that. You did what you were kind of brought on to do. But the issue is you still weren't able to deal with La Brava being in your systems, right? And that's like your uh, arch nemesis of yours. I don't really know like, how you haven't bettered yourself in your hacking ability or anything like that. And the time that, you know, since your last failure and this one, it's kind of embarrassing, but I don't know. I feel like you're not useless. You did provide you. I'm going to give you small role because yes, you provide a communication and you you were a little annoying to UA. You made them scramble in the room, but you you were like making Sukauchi shook. Like, how serious can I take you? You're Sukauchi's villain in this arc. Snipe. Oh my god, I almost forgot Snipe's name. I was gonna be so embarrassed. Snipe. Snipe, I don't remember you being in this arc. And if you were, it had to have just been for memes and shits and giggles. Because I don't understand. What did you do? What did you do in this arc? Right? Sorry, Snipe. I, I don't remember you. I don't know. We got we got the category, so I don't got to think too hard and delay the video for too long. But then we have Tamaki. And Tamaki, I do remember. Tamaki, Tamaki, I remember you, buddy. And you're going in useless at the very least. Let me tell you why, folks. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at him. This guy like put on a, ma uh, a disgusting show, became this big, disgusting creature in front of everyone. No one wanted to see that during the war. If I'm in a war and we're losing and i already had to look at a bunch of crawling disgusting fingers and maybe by that point even like disembodied finger versions of shigaraki's family i don't want to see my classmate become a giant writhing monster of flesh like a a, a, a horror out of my dreams an eldritch horror i don't want to see that personally 
But sure, we live in a world of quirks, and I feel like if I do have to see that, I'm at least expecting my classmate to cook, right? Like, that's a reasonable explanation. I'm expecting my classmate Tamaki, Sun Eater, to now use this giant laser beam, which shoots off like the side of the earth or something like a Kamehameha, and actually have some sort of effect. But we get all this build up, the chapter ends, we have to wait until the week after, or maybe it was a break that week, I don't remember entirely. And then it just doesn't really do anything, right? Like Shigaraki is just like, come on, gang. <laughs> come on, gang. Come on, man. You all dusting my shit up, bro. Come on. That's how Shigaraki treats his giant laser beam that he can only use one time. And then like he uses scorpion poison that gets ejected out of Shigaraki. Like he really doesn't, he really doesn't do anything. He can't save Bakugo in time. Like he... He's just kind of there. I mean, shout out to Tamaki for putting forward his best effort. Like, I don't think he's useless as a character overall in the series, but in the final arc, that, we're just going to leave that at that. Like, at the final arc, you didn't really, you didn't really do them. Ooh, Todoroki. We have Todoroki now. Now, Todoroki. Is it glazed to put Todoroki in Pivotal? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Okay, Todoroki starts the arc. Um... He's one of the first guys, you know, or one of the first people in general to go right to the front against the villains, right? Like he kn he knows exactly who he's after. Get Dobby into the battlefield or the uh, into the Troy system and get him to the the Camino Ward battlefield and all that stuff. And then once he's there, he pretty much gets the program, right? I have to fight my big brother. I have to put a stop to this. And they do have a pretty amazing fight. But it's not without issue. It's not completely without issue because, yes, Shoto has a fight against Dobby and, you know, they're cooking. I mean, literally, they're both cooking. But Shoto allows Endeavor's sidekick to die kind of on his watch, which I'm sure was not planned, obviously, by anybody. And then he's not able to defeat Toya, per se, really, at that time, or I guess Dobby. Like, he is able to freeze him for a bit using his Flash Fire Fist Phosphor ability, which, you know, completely freezes Dobby and stops all combustion and flames. But even then, Dobby is able to overcome it. But it's not really about the other person and what they were able to do, I suppose. Shoto was at least, let's look at the roles. He wasn't useless. He was more than, way more than a small role. Um, way more than useful. Substantial. I mean, I feel like he's definitely a lock for substantial, but pivotal. Here's why I'm going to argue. And here's the only reason I'm going to argue. That Shoto played a pivotal role. Like, pivotal. Like, shit would be different if he did not get involved at the exact moment or in the way that he did. If Shoto, if Shoto, along with Ida, didn't make it to Dobby's area at the end of the war, right? If they didn't make it there, the entire Todoroki family, gone. Endeavor, gone. All those families evacuating, gone like everyone within a very large area of japan would have been just wiped away by dobby's flames and then we don't really know what that would have done to the the climate or i guess i mean the weather at the moment or how that would have affected things because we did see th this battle was affecting climate like i think dobby is part of the reason that the weather changed so drastically over the course of the battle just because of the amount of like smoldering that he was doing and just the the, the heat and the difference between the rain coming down and it changed weather for a while. But if it wasn't for Shoto, not only perfecting his new move, right? Or getting it as close to perfect as he can and getting there on time to actually put a stop to everything that was going on. I feel like this would be a way more tragic event in the lives of everyone involved. They would have lost actually a lot of people and including a lot of the people who were evacuated we're never supposed to be anywhere near the battlefield in the first place or in any danger. I'm going to put Shoto in Pivotal. I'm sorry for anyone who doesn't agree. I definitely think Shoto was Pivotal in this arc. Him next to Star and Stripe looks crazy, though. Gotta say, him next to Star and Stripe does look insane because I feel like she played more of a role, sort of. But, like, on another level, it's not that far apart, the roles that they played. Like, sure... Shigar uh, Shigaraki. Sure, Todoroki's role is more contained within, like, I guess, the keeping up with the Todoroki's plot line, but it's still a massive, because he, he saved tons of fucking lives, like. All right, next we have Shoji. Mezo Shoji. All right, so Shoji, I guess, looping back around to the spinner discussion, Shoji, I mean, what a tough life you've had, buddy. 
Uh, I'm so sorry about all those awful things that happened to this character. But you kind of turned it around, right, and started becoming a, a, a force for good in the world and showing people, you know, stop hating against mutants so much. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? So Shoji comes out swinging with the Dupla arms, fighting against the entire mutant liberation force and really focusing specifically on Spinner. And I mean, his battle with Spinner was kind of cool and he really ended up kind of being more of like stopping the entire army that was going on as Spinner became more of a present mic battle. But... Shoji, I'm not going to lie. I was not reading that arc or that part of the story for you. So I paid attention to some of your backstory and some of the stuff that happened. But like I was more interested in Spinner in that arc. So honestly, you weren't useless. You did play a role. Were you as you are? Right, so I have Spinner in useful. Was Shoji as useful for the heroes as Spinner was for the villains? Spinner got Kurogiri free. I guess Shoji's actions also contributed to Kurogiri being free, which did also benefit the heroes in the end. But that's a little more of a reach. So I'm going to put Shoji in small role, right? It feels comfortable to put him in small role. Now, Shinso. Ooh, Shinso, Shinso, Shinso. Welcome to Class 1A, buddy. Um, Shinso, you did play a little bit of a role here. First, um, or first, well, no, you did, you did multiple things. First, you start off with tricking all for one using your quirk on, I believe it was either Aoyama or his parents, but you, you used your quirk and actually tricked all for one, which is pretty great. And then you were able to use your quirk against Gigantomachia, which even though it wasn't like ultimately the thing that had Gigantomachia switch sides, it's still something, right? Like you did that, right? Who would have the balls to do that? But you, I guess, like you did that, Aizawa student. Um, outside of that, it's not like you used your quirk directly on all for one, right? Like to, to stun him or maybe you did and it just wasn't very effective. You you were really there to get Makia to the battlefield, right? And also for the whole setup for the war with Aoyama's parents. I'll say you played a small role also. Like you helped. You helped set the stage twice, I would say. You helped set the stage uh, before the war and then you helped set the stage in the middle of it with Gigantomachia, but outside of that, you didn't really have a huge crucial role to play. So C feels kind of appropriate. All right. So sorry, Shinso fans. And when I'm talking to the character, yes, I know the characters don't exist. It's like halfway me talking to the fandom and just like going through the arguments in my head, right? It just makes it a lot easier. All right. And now we have, oh, Yoshindo, Yoshindo. Ah, look at you. You're happy that Yoshindo's here. Okay. So Yoshindo, otherwise known as Other Deku, I feel like I have the very tiniest, vaguest memory of him doing something in the final arc. I know he had that little fight against Muscular. Does he use his Earthquake at some point in this arc? I don't remember. Yeah, well, you can go right next to your baby girl. Ooh, Shigaraki. Guys, I don't really have to, I don't have to discuss this. Obviously, Shigaraki is going to go in S- Pivotal. I'm going to discuss it because I've given everyone a breakdown so far, so I'm not going to skip giving Shigaraki a breakdown. But I mean, where do you even start, right? Like, I guess at the beginning of the arc, you win the fight against Star and Stripe. I mean, you know, eh, not not to win, but you, you do kind of win the fight. You do. You survive. Um, and then, I mean, you know, after the healing and everything, Shigaraki, uh, when the war starts, he really terrorizes everyone who is left at UA when Deku is taken away, right? Like, they know even when they get there and when they, like, they're talking about, oh, we'll hold them off as long as, you know, and until Deku gets back and Baku goes, like, we'll beat him maybe before Deku gets... No, 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 no. Shigaraki was not here to play any of those little childish hero games that these guys were here to play. He came out and immediately got into his million fingers regrowing out of his body bag he was like dealing with pretty much everything that they were doing and i guess the word that comes to mind when i think of shigaraki's role in this arc or at least in this season is he adapts he's constantly adapting through every situation presented to him in this arc both physically and mentally and and just like in millions of ways right like shigaraki does goes through so much in this arc. I mean, not just having the fight against Mirko and Best Genus and all the heroes there, 
then having the fight against Deku, and that really doesn't go all that well, his body evolving, uh, separating from all for one, now maybe we're theorizing that those two bodies separated into actually two different beings, so the leftover body could be the person that was in the most recent chapter, that's a, I guess a theory for another time, but after having to separate from his body, then going on to fight against Deku when he's not having his quirks blocked by Aizawa, right? So he could use Decay and then having to deal with that whole situation. And then again, like the inner battle, there was just so much that Shigaraki did that obviously has to be in Pivotal. I guess I'll save it for another time to talk about how I feel like the end of his character arc went. That's kind of like its own video thing because Shigaraki, it's like one of my favorite characters in the entire series. I'm going to talk about the way his character ended in the series. It's probably going to be like a whole dedicated video. I mean, for a million reasons. And number one being because it starts with S itself. Shigaraki is going to go in the pivotal tier or the tier list. I mean, he, he's just one of the top most useful people that did anything. And then we go again to the opposite side of the spectrum. Saro, I'm not going to say that I don't remember you. I mean, mainly because you, you recently did something. If I wanted to be technical, what you recently did it's probably not going to make it in the season seven. If I wanted to be real technical and not be nice, but because I like Saro as a character, I'm not going to be real technical. But you aren't real. You're not really in this season all that much. They might give you a little scene or something because, you know, I think Nakamura likes you or someone likes animating you. But yeah, we were like hyped up for Saro to get this crazy moment or something. And then we, he didn't really get anything like that. Like he was kind of off screen for most of the arc. Um, So you... You weren't literally not there. You weren't useless. No, I'm you actually. Yeah, you're going in useless. You're going useless because it's not that I don't remember you. I remember you. You were there. You didn't really make anything worse. You you again, you were there. Yeah, this this is weird now because I have literally not there and don't remember. But I feel like there's people I remember just not being there and you're there. You know what? You're going in literally not there. You're going in literally not there. I am going to choose to be technical, actually. You're going and literally not there because you're not useless. You're just pretty much not around. You you like off screen Sukuna Jutsu the entire time. Saro, what, what, what are we doing here? What's her name? Setsuna Tokage. Setsuna Tokage. What do you do, huh? I got time for this foolishness. What are you in Gunga Mountain Battlefield? You're actually, I'll throw you in there. I think she was in the Gunga Mountain Battlefield or, or something fighting against Shigaraki, maybe. She was somewhere doing something, but it's not. Drill boy, I don't remember you. You are not notable. That quirk sucks. Uh, ooh, his, that's, his name is Nshishido. I call him Meatball all the time, but I should probably say his name. Uh, Shishikura? I gotta Google it now. Is it Shishikura? Shishikura, look at me, buried memory. Just get in that. Okay, so Seishi, Meatball. Seiji, right? Is, I just looked at it. I can't believe I forgot that already. Talking about my memory. Um, Seiji does have a nice little role to play in this arc. I am going to put you in small role just off the bat because you don't do too much. You're fighting against all for one alongside, um, I, I guess your peers, right? So you're fighting against him, but you weren't able to turn him into a meatball. So you kind of just provided like a bunch of one hit. Don't touch me flesh pockets throughout the giant storm and tornado that all for one was dealing with. But since he wasn't turned into a meatball and it just didn't really go in your favor, I feel like uh, you, you had a small role. You weren't useless, but your your role was really to lock him down within that tornado. So I can't even put you where Setsuna is. Like, I'm going to put him in C. Sugar man, I might have to be real with you, sugar man. I don't remember what you did. You were probably in one of those areas that I didn't care about all that much. I know that in the manga recently, you've been useful. You helped in the final battle, but that's not going to be in season seven. And I got to be fair. I just did Saro dirty, but I do not. I don't remember what you actually did during the season. You, you don't do anything during the Star and Stripe arc. You don't do anything during like, what do you contribute to the trader arc? Even you just kind of stand there like. Right? Like, <laughs> and then <laughs> the war arc, I mean, you just punch some stuff and eat some sugar. Ryukyu, damn it, this hurts. Ryukyu, you did something, right? Ryukyu. Hey, Ryukyu. Ryukyu, it's not looking good for you. Ryukyu, it says you literally, you literally only appear in flashback 
twice in the final war arc. What's that about? What's that about? Did Mama raise a slacker? Is that is that someone slacking on their job? Ryukyu, you literally were not there. And if you were, you appeared only in chapter one, 423. That was like a chapter ago. I, I don't even remember what the hell you did. That was like a week ago. You did nothing. Roddy? Oh, Roddy did appear for a second. But just as a cameo. Honestly, Roddy. No, I mean, I mean you literally also were not there. Redestro? Oh, well, wait a minute. Redestro, what's the timing? What's the time? Oh, like, I pressed my nose. I didn't mean to do that. What is the timing of Redestro attacking the association head? That's right before society crumbles, right? I mean, that is a contributing factor, but that was a clone of Redestro, I believe. Redestro himself has already been captured. So you're literally not there. You're also literally not there. You're just, you're just not there. Pop step. Why are you, you're also not, you're just not there. <laughs> I don't know why you're in this list, Vigilante's character. Pony Girl. I don't remember you. I remember you, but I don't remember what your contribution was. I feel like I vaguely remember Pony Girl doing something, but again, a lot of the Class 1B characters, like, a lot of the 1A and Class 1B characters, their roles in this arc, if they're not having, like, a main battle, are small roles, right? Like, they're gonna have a small moment just because we gotta bring everything full circle. But really, in this last couple of, like, chapters in the end, we, we saw them, we saw Horikoshi loop back around to give them another moment or so in the final battle, obviously. But that didn't include, like, to my memory at least, it didn't include, like, all these 1B characters. I'm sure there was, like, a couple, like, a handful or whatnot, but I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be a moment for Class 1A and Deku, obviously. Yeah, so I don't remember you doing anything, Pony Girl. I'm sorry. Like, next time, put on a better performance. Oh, Pixie Bob. Okay, Pixie Bob. Didn't I think you were dead? Well, that was in the last war arc, actually, not even season seven. There was a point where it looked like Pixie Bob might have bit the dust, right? But she did, and she ended up surviving. Be honest, Pixie Bob, I don't remember the role that you played. Overhaul, overhaul, okay. Um, You played your little role in the, the Lady Nagant section of the Dark De or the Vigilante Deku arc. You were mentioned. I mean, your quirk was at least mentioned in the final arc, but we didn't see Deku take you back to the... Gramps or whatever, or whatever that man is to you. We didn't really see that happen. You played a very, very minuscule, small role. Actually, you didn't. You are literally not there because that small role that you play was only very recently in the manga, which is not going to be covered in season seven. Overhaul, why are you here? Get out of my fucking face. Tailman, 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 Ojiro, uh, buddy, buddy, like, buddy. To put you in small role. Yeah, I'll put you in small role. I barely, I know you did some, no, you're not there. You were pretty much off screen the entire time in the same place that Ryukyu was, right? Like Ryukyu and you were on the same battlefield. You guys are fighting against Gashly. We really didn't see all that much of that. It was just kind of going on in the background. Like you don't affect the story one way or another by your presence. I'm putting you in useless actually. Also Ryukyu, I'm gonna, mm, I'm gonna put you in useless because who cares if you beat Gashley or not? Anyone else would have beat him. You know what I mean? Like not you specifically, but I'm saying like if you guys, if if you even did beat him, I don't remember. Like you guys in your battle against Gashley was so put into the back of the background of the back, like the deepest, darkest back of all the battles happening. And Horikoshi really didn't care to like expand too much on that battle. I know we saw Gashley like the one time at least or the one or two times. He got very, 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 very tiny updates on that battle. But I don't know. Like I really didn't feel like we needed that. Do better. Do better next time. Maybe the anime will actually give you a scene. Um, don't remember you being in the arc. Native, aren't you, aren't you literally dead? Native, aren't you literally dead? Mustard, you're literally not there. Muscular, you're also, you're not there. You were captured. Moonfish. I don't remember. I'm not going to say you're not there. Manoma. Oh man, Manoma. Manoma actually like did a really good job. Uh, in the final war arc of proving that, yeah, he's not the main character, but he can still be helpful with his quirk. Um, and there's no problem with him using his quirk to, you know, with other people in collaboration to be, uh, to, to play a really extremely important role in the war arc. I, I'm, man, I hate that I have to do this. I really hate that I have to do this. I have to put Monoma in Pivotal because if it wasn't for Monoma copying 
or Monoma. I'm sorry. People always get pissed off no matter how I pronounce this fucking name. Monoma, if he didn't copy Aizawa's um, erasure, big problem, right? If he didn't copy Kurigiri's portal, big problem, right? So that wouldn't have been good. We really, really, really needed him to do those things. So Monoma is going to go into pivotal. Yeah, substantial. But if you didn't have the Monoma portals, literally, like how would the heroes have even all gotten to where all for one was inside of his range of his, like, I guess, senses, like in time to save Deku from being swarmed by literally every villain. Like the very, very beginning of the war shows Monoma played a very pivotal role in this battle. Yaoyorozu, Momo, 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 you played a bit of a role. You made like an awesome like proton cannon or something recently in the manga, didn't you? But um, you were helping out the UA sky base from my memory. You did, you helped create like a thing or two extra, I believe. But honestly, that was mainly your role in this arc, right? It was to make sure that the UA sky base was in the air and then it was being repaired and all that stuff. So I'm going to put you, not in useless, I'm going to put you in small role. You were very much in a support role in this arc and in this season. You very much play a support role. So you're going to go in the small role category. Mirio, this is hard. I mean, look, Mirio got his quirk back and appears in this arc fighting against Shigaraki. And, you know, I mean, technically he is not useless. Technically, Mirio does show out and he does do his thing. I want to put Mirio in useless and I just want to see him there for a second. I'm not going to keep him there. I know it's ridiculous. I'm not that big of a Mirio hater. I actually like Mirio. I'm not nearly enough of a hater to put him here, even though it's funny. It'd be hilarious and people would be mad because he he doesn't really ever do any damage to Shigaraki. Like he does that little bit of emotional damage to Shigaraki. I'm really underselling that. That was actually very, very important. That moment that he caused with Tenko and all that stuff. That was important. I can't downplay it. But like when Mirio got his quirk back and came back into the story, I wanted to see him lay hands on somebody, right? And I knew if it was going to be Shigaraki, Shigaraki would have a hard time decaying him or taking his quirk of all for one. So, so I thought Mirio was going to be a good counter against Shigaraki. Come to find out, yeah, Shigaraki's high durability and defense is not something that Mirio is able to like overcome right at this point in the story for some reason even though i feel like before they wrote mirio as being very very strength wise powerful but that doesn't matter when you're dealing with an all might level body i guess with shigaraki so that's neither here nor there but mirio he played a, a, a very important role in this arc i'll say but he held off shigaraki using i mean his cheeks sadly but he he was a nuisance right and i feel like he's not useless he does play a small role at least i'm putting him in useful right? You, he was almost on the border of either being a small role or useless, but no, I am going to put him in useful because again, if it wasn't for Mirio keeping, um, Shigaraki busy until literally the exact moment that he did. And that last kind of second smart decision to kind of echo, uh, night eye and, and make the world smile and all that stuff. If it wasn't for that, man, things would have been different in that last segment of the story bakugo might actually be gone genus might be gone edshot might be gone i mean i would be happy if edshot was gone but th that is a pretty big difference that would have happened in the story if it wasn't specifically for mirio's actions at that time so i'm gonna leave mirio in useful and then as far as mirko oh mirko as far as mirko goes she does get in her bag a bit i know she fights against shigaraki when the arc starts she, she loses some more limbs. I mean, that does happen and she gets them replaced and then loses more again. But I mean, she puts on, she puts on a decent show against Shigaraki. Now I could give her the same critique that she wasn't able to save Bakugo and this and that. But I mean, did anyone try harder than Mirko in that situation? I don't think so. I think she was literally ripping like stuff off at a certain point, like doing the most that she possibly could. And she really put on. I mean, I, I'm not going to put her in substantial. Mm, she didn't necessarily contribute as much as Mirio. I'm going to give her a small role. I'm going to be honest. I do have a lot of favoritism towards Mirko, but that doesn't change the fact that she only really played a small role in this arc overall. Also considering the fact that she was beaten and then, you know, she was against the tree and passed out. And I feel like we didn't really see her after the large giant explosion that happened when Shigaraki shed his previous body. Are we actually halfway through this list now? Oh my God. Mineta. Now, Mineta, I didn't really see you do all that many, like 
all that many things. I do remember you though. You did contribute uh, in this arc. I'm not going to forget your contribution. Mineta, honestly, out of memory, his biggest contribution in this entire arc was hitting all for one on the back of the leg with a grape seed is what I'm going to call it, I guess. He hit him with one of those and it made all for one kind of distracted for a moment from trying to go take Tokoyami's quirk. And then the little kind of pitiful speech that Mineta gave made all for one just realize I I'm just... What am I doing? I'm wasting my time here. I got to go. And that did save everyone on that battlefield, but especially Tokoyami from having all for one doing some quirk shopping, which then could have obviously had some crazy effects for the, I mean, the, the, the butterfly effect, right? For what would have happened as the story continued on if Mineta didn't throw that one little grape seed at um at all for one right i mean obviously if all for one gets tokoyami's quirk and then goes to fight all might he's just god doing all might dirty the worst so thankfully mineta was able to keep that from happening so i'm gonna give you a small roll you kept tokoyami from getting his quirk taken that was cool you saved all might from really getting done dirty but uh, i'm not gonna say i'm gonna put you in useful yet because you didn't quite do as much as mirio Oh man, water, water. I, I don't know. I'm just going to call you water boy. All right, Bobby Boucher, you helped Aizawa keeping his eyes wet. And maybe you did the same for Monoma. You definitely got way more shine in the first half of the arc, or I guess whenever we focused on UA, obviously. Um, so you weren't any of these things. You weren't useless. You did play a small role. Uh, but without you, Shig without you, without you, Aizawa couldn't keep his erasure on as long or Monoma. Do you go useful? I'm gonna put you useful because you had, no, but you're just, you're just doing this, dude. You played a small role. Like we can't give you too much credit. Mandalay, Mandalay. Don't remember your presence in this arc. And I should, cause you're a baddie. Lunchtime rush. You weren't in this arc. I don't remember lunchtime rush being in this arc. Lady Nagant or Lady Nagant. I'm still probably pronouncing it wrong. That's great. Um, you, you did amazing, baby. You, you did such a good job. You, you shot Shigaraki from the top of that hospital. Well, there was a falling UA sky base. There's one man on the sky base and you somehow threaded the needle perfectly to shoot him with that sniper from across there. It was amazing as your whole body bursted apart. That wasn't amazing. I didn't like seeing that. I don't think anyone likes seeing that. Hopefully you're doing okay. Call me. All right. So we're going to put Lady Nagant in, in B. Yes, you kept Shigaraki from using Decay on the sky base and everything. Maybe Deku could have lopped off the portion. You know, he could have lopped off the portion. There's a lot of what ifs. You were at the very least useful. And because I didn't really give Mirko favoritism, I'm going to, oh, wait a minute though. Nope. Kurohiro, Kurohiro, what did you do? What did you do, Kurohiro? I don't, I don't remember you. I, were you in the Gunga Mountain Villa area? We don't know. We have no idea where you were. Someone out there does. Not me. Kurogiri, come on now. You, you got it. You play a substantial role in this arc. Or maybe you're just useful when I really think about it. Let's think about it. Kurogiri starts off this arc in prison. Or in the, the health facility, I guess, the hospital. Then he gets broken out, uh, spreads twice to the different battlefields, brings Toga, you know, facilitates the movement of the second half of it, I guess, of the battles that are going to be taking place. Really sets the stage for the second half of the arc. Then goes and disappears alongside of Aizawa and only returns at the very end. And I'm still not entirely sure what he what he did. And I, I guess really at a certain point in season seven, Kurogiri is just going to vanish, right? So hold on. No, you were useful. You were useful because the villains didn't use you. The the heroes kind of used you through Manoma, but he was more important than you were really, honestly, at that point. And then as far as what you're actually going to do in season seven, like you're really just kind of a taxi. I mean, that is your job, but you're really kind of just a taxi to make sure that we go from the first half of the battles in this arc to the second half of the battles in this arc or the second locations to really start bringing everything together. So you are useful just from like a plot standpoint. Uh, you'd be one of the most useful characters in my series, freely moving characters from point A to point B so I can get the story moving. Um, but you're also useful, obviously, for the people who are you know, making use for you. I guess both sides that end up making use of you at some point during this arc. And I'm going to move on because that sounds Tenya Ida Ida. Oh, man, Ida. Listen, listen, man, I'm I'm Ida's biggest hater. I don't like that character. I really I, I, I 
I really don't. I really don't. I really don't. Sadly to say, uh, Ida is a case of wasted potential to me. Just looking from the outside, like very, very like bird's eye view perspective. Like at some point earlier in the series, he should have been way faster than he was, right? Like he's not that fast. He's just not impressively fast to me in the manga. Now in the anime, they make sure to add all sorts of sauce to Ida's animation and his running scenes to make him, I mean, yeah, he looks really fast in the anime. And I'm sure the scene that he's going to have in the anime, is it going to happen? Is it, 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 it actually might happen in this season. The scene that he's going to have with that final speed burst and everything, that, I mean, probably... I mean, that scene is going to be ridiculous, I'm sure. Like, the just showing how his speed is moving. Deku's also going to have, like, this really amazing speed scene. I guess it's hard being the speedster in a series where the main character is also kind of a speedster, right? Like, but that's your only thing. So you should be impressively fast for most of the series. Though, I'll say I can't put you any lower than A, substantial, right, Ida fans? I can't put him any lower than that because he, he he's Todoroki's taxi to being pivotal, Right? Todoroki isn't pivotal without Ida being substantial, right? So I guess Ida has to walk, ironically, in this case, for Todoroki to be able to run. So Ida, thank you for being a really, really good, I can't even say a taxi service. You were like a, a private jet. You were one of the PJs, buddy. Kota, don't remember you. Mm, that's not true. Kota, you you were around, but like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, you're like, who cares? You're just, you're not really a factor. In this, you're just kind of like, you know, you're, you're, you're there, you're, you're evacuating. Uh, Kojiro Bando, don't remember what you did. Koichi, you literally appeared at, like for one frame. Actually, you're going to be the first character who made things worse. Yui Kodai, I feel like Yui Kodai did do something in the Gunga Mountain Villa. Hold on. I feel like she did do something in the Gunga Mountain Villa battle. Maybe she made something giant or she gave Mount Lady a weapon or something. She did do something. She did play a small role, um, but you know, these, these side, like 1B and 1A characters that have very small roles, you know, we can kind of like skim past them a little bit. Um, oh no, Coda, you did something. Coda, you had like a whole quirk awakening. Is that going to be in this season? Coda, I'm going to be honest with you though. Oh, it was during the mutant revolution. I was about to say, I don't remember like what the context was of your whole moment and everything, but like, uh, right. But okay. All right. All right so Coda. You, your head kind of sprouted open. You summoned a bunch of animals and stuff and you, you did your thing. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to have to, or I'm going to get a lot of hate. I'm going to have to put you in small role or I'm going to get a lot of hate Coda, Koji Coda. But just know this is, this is, this is what I really feel like you, you, you're kind of useless. You did your thing that one time. I remember even be a, being a tiny bit excited. Uh, Knuckle Duster wasn't there, but yeah, no, 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 no. Whatever. Let's move on because I'm gonna, I'm gonna really just move Coda down to like made things worse, and it's gonna just. I can see the comments in my head. Um, Kirishima, Kirishima, hell yeah, man, Kirishima, Kirishima. Obviously, you were in the area with Ashido near Gigantomachia, right? And you did put on in that area. You saved, I believe, Shinso. So you, know, you guys are fighting, and you guys had all that stuff going on over there. But you're again one of these characters that really suffers. From being mostly backlined like you're just kind of put in the back of this entire scenario you did have your awesome moment last season but since this is a usefulness tier list for this season you don't do too much honestly i mean you're you're around you contribute to the fight that you're in which is mostly handled off screen and then you do have a moment that's important with the whole slime villain thing and Shinso and you, you were on the back of Makia and, but I feel like at a certain point, your presence in this arc kind of fizzled out, right? Like as far as what's going to be shown in season seven, you don't have a giant substantial role to play Kirishima. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you small role and that's me being nice. Cause I like Kirishima's character. I'm going to give him small role. Noko, you were helping capture, um, villains in the Gunga Mountain Villa and then as soon as Dobby got there you were pretty useless but yeah like did you capture any named characters I'm gonna make you useless you were useless once Dobby arrived and Dobby was burning the forest for a long time and then after that it was raining so there was no conditions for your spores to even spread anymore so you kind of ended up not doing anything Itsuka Kendo Kendo 
Kendo did save, uh, I believe, someone. It was probably, again, like the Todoroki family, from the falling rubble in the evacuation chamber. She was at least in a small way useful, right? So I'm, where did I put Tetsu? I put Tetsu Tetsu here so I can put Kendo and Tetsu Tetsu in small role. Katsuma and I, uh, Mahoro. I, I, I remember you being here, but you're the same as Roddy Soul, right? Like, you're pretty much literally not there. You guys just get mentioned. Kamui Woods. Uh, Kaminari. Oh, you you were like a battery. You you played a small role. You were a battery for UA. You, you, you got the energy running along with, the, uh, with Manga Fukudashi, who is probably somewhere on the list and whose name I just butchered. Manga is not somewhere on the list, mind you. That's odd. Favoritism, whoever made this list. You have some 1B students here, but you don't have Manga. It's weird that you would forget the character out of 1B who's probably my favorite character, but we're going to forgive that. Just assume now Manga would be along with Kaminari in the sea. I was, I was going to say maybe B, but no, I I'll put Manga in the C along of Kaminari. There's just an invisible kind of, you know, a, a text bubble here you can't see. Kami, Kami, you came and gave Tokoyami a massive boost, right? I mean, in that final battle against All for One, and you saved Hawks, and I like having Hawks around as a character and alive in the series, so you play, you were actually pretty useful. You were pretty useful. I mean, that illusion, that, that, it's very OP, her, her quirk, actually. Was she more useful than, yeah, yeah, more useful than Shoji? Yes. Yes. Um, Beastman, I'm sorry, I do not remember your name. I tried to just pull it out of a memory, and I do not remember it. I want to call you Shishido, but I know that you're not Shishido, because Shishido is actually in the series, and... Shishido should also be on this list, person who made this list. I don't know what that's about. But Beastman, I don't remember your presence in this arc. You probably did something, but sorry. Um, Inasa, I mean, again, you were actually helpful. You were actually helping along with Tokoyami and um, Seiji and, you know, uh, Kami. You actually did stuff. I'm going to put you next to Kami because All for One was actually getting pretty annoyed by your quirk and actually thought about taking it. And for All for One to want to take a quirk, it has to be at least useful. Ibarra, I honestly don't remember what you did in this arc. Uh, I don't even remember your name, even though I feel like in the anime, I remember you having a cool quirk. The Nomu, I mean, the Nomu had a small role. No, 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 no. Yeah, the Nomu had a small role to play, but we, we kind of just like saw like them here and there just fighting a bunch of random heroes and stuff like that. They had their role to play, but now I feel like I, I'm kind of doing everyone below the Nomu dirty because they are literally damn near brainless creatures. Right? I mean, they literally have their brains, but as far as like they're conscious and they're still more useful than like everyone below them, which includes characters like Sarah, who actually did stuff, but I guess not in this arc. Hawks. Man, Hawks, talk about a, just enjoying the run of one of my favorite characters in the series. Hawks is great, man. There are some characters that remind you Horikoshi can cook, and Hawks is one of them. I feel like his role in the final battle against All for One, I really liked sort of like he was taking a more support route, right? I'm going to support Endeavor in whatever he's trying to do. I'm going to make sure to fight off All for One's mental stuff that he's trying to do with Endeavor, even though it, it wasn't completely successful. You could clearly see that going into the final arc, Hawks was doing a lot of thinking about All for One and like what he stands for, what his thoughts are, what his goals are. Is he actually the kind of person that has any kind of emotions at all? Does he have a heart? Like, he was really psychoanalyzing all for one. And I guess by virtue, by that virtue, Shigaraki, right? Like, he was really psychoanalyzing him and, and, and really Endeavor also as well, right? So that he could protect Endeavor from all the psychological attacks that all for one was going to levy his way. I like Hawks' role as a support in this arc, definitely. And then you get into him being able to break all for one's mask, even though the mask was repaired and whatnot and then broken again. Him being able to break it in the first place definitely was useful. He saved Jiro and Tokoyami right that one time, I think, very, very briefly. And then he had to be saved by, uh, by Endeavor, obviously, when that massive kind of spider web of different uh, tendrils was going towards them. So you did play a, a great role in this arc, Hawks. I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to think of where to put you on this list. 
substantial though. Sub substantial. I have to put you in substantial because Ida's here. Look at what happens when I don't hate it, bro. See, now because I have Ida here in substantial, I can't have Hawks below Ida. I feel like he did more. Yeah, Ida was very important in that one moment, but like he didn't carry, but he he held his own. Like he he literally fought to the bone against all for one, like to defend Tokoyami and everything. He lost his quirk, everything that happened to him. I got to put him in substantial. Horu Hagakure. Hagakure, I know you diverted some light beams and lasers and stuff at some point, probably. Hagakure, help me out here. Oh, well, actually, because the final arc does in season seven does include the traitor arc. You were the one who found the traitor, which I'm going to say really automatically puts you in substantial. Yeah, I'm going to say it puts you in substantial and here's the reason. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It puts you in useful. It puts you in useful. I was going to say substantial because without Toru finding the traitor, I mean, it didn't seem like Aoyama was going to follow the order and do exactly what All for One asked anymore. So he was going to put his family in danger. I mean, like a, maybe he would have done it, but it seems like this time there's a lot more trepidation about it. If she didn't find out Aoyama was the traitor, they wouldn't have been able to set up the, the way that the war started and really like enact this plan that they had which is well ultimately i mean it, it didn't win them the war the plan things fell apart and it was all chaotic but it, it set everything in place for it to go the way that it did and really toru is one of the bigger parts of why that happened so i'm gonna have to play her in useful as far as like combat acts and stuff like that i really don't remember her having oh no 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 you helped aoyama she helped aoyama out against certified flower boy i, I don't remember his name kuna I think it starts with a K, but the guy with the, 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 the flowers, I was fighting against Aoyama. She helped him in that battle. So she did have a combat act. So, okay, I'm going to leave you in useful because you were helpful in really getting the entire war organized in the first place and making it possible from the hero's perspective. And also you did help out the person who, you know, you discovered was the traitor and, and that's very heroic. So I'm going to make you useful. All right. Gran Torino, um, you're just literally not there. Like you're just around. You're, you're watching on the TV. The glowing baby. I remember when people thought the glowing baby was all for one. Wasn't that amazing? I think I was in that camp for a little bit too. Glowing baby. Yeah, you made things worse. I mean, in many ways, but I'm going to put you in literally not there because you're you're just dead far beyond, you know, like way before the story started, you got out of there. Gigantomachia. Well, Gigantomachia spends half the final war arc in like, you know, a, a prison of sorts. And then he gets out and then he, he helps against All for One, which, I mean, I do have Tokoyami pretty high up for his help against All for One. Dragon Tomaki was pretty much dealt with pretty quickly. The only reason that he went and saw All for One in the first place was to conclude his character arc, right? That, that's kind of like the closure that he needed to get him either reformed in the future or have him be on the side of good to some degree. If he can be, I don't know, if they can prove his crimes or if they can look to the side and try to like fix his mind in some way, like they're probably going to have to do with Spinner. Yeah. Gigantomaki, like you, you appeared. You, I, I get why you couldn't be too useful in this arc because you were pretty useful in the last arc and people would get sick of seeing like, you know, the same scale and whatnot of everything. You'd have to turn it up if you were going to really use him in this arc. So Horikoshi had him throw a mountain at all for one. Horikoshi did have him go against the person that he was the most loyal against in the entire universe. And that kind of made him fulfill his role. So Makia, I'll say you were useful. You were a useful ally for a very, very brief period to the heroes until you were defeated by your master. Gentle, oh man, gentle criminals. So we, uh, this season, we get the backstory of what Gentle's been up to, right? Like ever since the gentle criminal arc, we haven't seen him since then. And obviously in this season, we learn, you know, uh, what he's been going through in the prisons and what happened with him during the prison break and all that stuff, obviously. Then we see Gentle coming back into the story to help Deku, uh, uh, really to help hold up UA so that the battle of Deku and all that stuff can continue and go on as it's supposed to, when it's supposed to. And I mean, it was really awesome seeing him in lover mode, using his uh, elastic pads to keep UA up. I really wished on a certain level that Gentle had a little bit more to do in this final season. Like, yeah, sure, the, the holding up UA thing was really, really, really cool. But I just, and I guess that's why they gave us the prison break stuff to show him, to show us that he could still get in a sort of bag. But I, I, I wanted to see Gentle just do like a tiny bit more. Not to say that he's, uh, not to say that he was useless. He definitely played more of a substantial, 
I'm gonna go substantial. He definitely played more than a useful or small role. He kept UA from crashing into the ocean and everyone on UA could have died if that was, if that happened, Aizawa would have been thrown. Aizawa would have been thrown everywhere, right? Like he wouldn't have had the line of sight on Shigaraki anymore. Walla was sinking in the water and Shigaraki got like away a little bit. He could have destroyed the whole thing, killing everyone inside. Like it just would have been real bad when you think about it, right? Like how bad things could have gone. So I have no problem putting Gentle in the A for substantial. You did your thing. I mean, you didn't do, you didn't have like a crazy big fight or anything like that, but what you did was very substantial because you saved pretty much the lives of most of the main characters that we've learned, uh, that we've met over the course of the series. Gang Orca, Gang Orca, okay. You did take the charge in Gang Orca land or whatever it's called. You did take the charge in fighting against the Nomu. I do believe Gang Orca's area might have been the first area to actually defeat their Nomu for the most part, right? Like they were taking out high-end Nomus over there. Like it was kind of nothing, or I guess the near high ends. They were doing a pretty good job of coordinating how that was handled. Yeah, Gang Orca, you have a small role to play. You were useful, but like you're kind of in the background, I want to say. Really your location that you provide to the story in this final arc is more useful, I feel, than you. Fat Gum, or remember you in this arc. Endeavor, man, oh God. This is the problem of getting to like the last line of the tier list. You start getting to some of the characters where we could really just sit here. We could sit here for the next two hours and talk about everything that Endeavor went through in this arc and whether or not he was useful or useless throughout his entire life. We can go beyond season seven, but let's not do that because I don't think it would be a very happy story. Endeavor, you're not useless in this arc, I'll say. You're not useless. You do get like weirdly like just mentally stamina broken by all for one a couple times a little not out of character i'd say but it's just like come on man you gotta know you gotta know that that's coming but sure sure it's all for one sure you know granted what he told you was crazy <laughs> so sure you know the whole endeavor's arm and then i mean that, that was really really cool um he really put the pause on all for one to the point where all for one had to use his trump card, right? Like Endeavor did that. That was thanks to Endeavor. So we have to say thank you to him for that. And even all for one was surprised that he was pushed that far. But then he has to do the whole fight with Dobby. Then he has to do the fight with Dobby again, sort of not even really trying to fight him, really trying to save him. Then dealing with his family and everything. I mean, Endeavor, you just went through so much in this arc. And then like, I mean, it's all your fault. Let's not forget that playboy. I don't, I don't want to sound too sorry for you because you did this. You did this, but to each their own, man. Uh, uh, you're not the best father, but as far as where you go in the useful, I mean, come on, pivotal, pivotal. If Endeavor didn't bring all for one to the point where he was literally ash and bones and had to rewind himself, what would it have taken? At what point would we have reached the point where he was now rewinding, right? When he went to the other battlefield with Deku or somebody or, or Bakugo would have had to put him in that state, All Might, if he would have ran into All Might before being in that state, it's just much more impossible for All Might to have defeated him. Like, albeit he was apparently getting like, in some ways more powerful or feral or whatever as he was getting younger because his rage was starting to become more uncontrollable because he's gotten his uh, his emotions under control as this guy, whatever, right? Sure. But nobody can convince me that without Endeavor, if you just take Endeavor, scoop Endeavor out of this arc, this entire arc changes because all for one, the goose is on the loose and you don't want that. And nobody here wanted that. So I'm going to keep Endeavor in S. I'll actually put him next to Star and Stripe just because, and I guess Shigaraki. Oh, no. Let me not separate Endeavor and Shoto. I'll put Shigaraki at the end here with the villains. Ooh, there's still no other pivotal villains yet, but let's see. Let's see. Edshot. I hate Edshot. Can't lie. Can't lie. Made things worse. This is how I really feel. Did Edshot actually make anything worse? Um, no. No, he saved Bakugo's life using uh a method of using his quirk that he's literally never ever displayed before and a dirty wash bubble from his pocket that withstood uh a hundred and something percent all might strength level opponent's attack that had his body in tatters his body which mind you could fold and probably avoid the full brunt of the attack so that's how hard the attack was and the bubble in his pocket that he had as a deus machina it was just, whatever i'm going on a rant right i'm not trying to go on a rant 
In actuality, Edshot probably deserves to be in Pivotal. You save Bakugo, as much as I, I, I don't like how it happened and everything, people think I don't like Bakugo for some reason, which is madness. I guess we're gonna get to that soon. You probably deserve to be in Pivotal. That is really just on the shoulders of Bakugo and what he was able to accomplish because of you. So I'm gonna put you just like Ida in Substantial because you are trash. You got in that fight against Shigaraki, Ed Shot, and you, he was just awful, right? Like he barely did anything of use at all and then was blown away and then appeared again when it was time to revive Bakugo. And then you disappeared again inside of Bakugo's chest for like the rest of the time. And then even though you were supposed to die when you used your technique, you still ended up living, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Ed Shot lived anyway. So I really want to put Ed Shot in Made Things Worse, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Ectoplasm, um, you kept Aerie from running away and you babysat Aerie. And that's not until, that's not until after the events of what's in this season. So you're just literally not there. Deku, no, we're, we're skipping Deku for a second. Let me put him over here. Dobby, oh, well, Dobby. I guess let's look at it objectively. How useful was Dobby actually in the final arc? Like from an action standpoint, from like a, from like a looking at what he did standpoint. How actually useful was Dobby? I mean, Dobby here, Dobby's not really here to be useful, right? At this point in the story, Dobby is here wearing the all white clothes, really as a way of saying goodbye. That's like his funeral garb, right? So Dombi is not really here to be useful. I guess by nature of what it is that he's literally trying to do, which is to get rid of the number one hero and you know his little brother who was also very, very powerful. That would be helpful to the villains or that would be useful to the villains. But Dobby is really just trying to glow, go out in the biggest blaze of glory possible. And he does cause a massive distraction. He does cause a massive problem. So I'm going to say he does make, I want to say a significant contribution. He is, he's useful. But when I think about what he actually accomplished and like how it helped, you know what I mean? Like how getting what he would have accomplished would have actually helped the villains. I mean, you would have had a bunch of dead people who evacuated, right? They, they would have been gone thanks to his fire. But is, is that really necessarily useful to the to the villains, right? Like just having all those people be gone? I don't know. I'm not going to put him in substantial. I'm going to put him in useful along with Makia. Dombi was just kind of here on his own mission. Then we have, I mean, you're literally not there. Uh, that was Compress. So Mentos, you were pretty, you have a small role to play because you were creating all the, the you know, helping the UA base and all that stuff. So you, you were useful. Best genus, um, or you played a small role, so Mentos. Best genus, you were useful. You were helping Bakugo. You were, you were fighting against like, you know, Shigaraki, obviously doing the best that you could with your injuries present in mind, obviously. I mean, the character did really, really good as far as his attempt, right? Like he tried, he, he got, kept getting up, making sure that his student, if he was in front of him or behind him, he was going to try to protect him, even though if, if it seemed like completely helpless. So shout out to Best Genus for that. But yeah, outside of that, I... I Sure, you're part of the reason that Bakugo is alive, but I feel like Ed Shot did way more than you in that vein of keeping Bakugo alive, even though you protected him. So I'm not going to put you in A substantial. I am going to probably put best genus in just useful. I don't think I'm going to move him out of there. He's not small role. He definitely plays more than a small role. And he's like almost substantial, I'll say. He's almost substantial, but he's just kind of useful. Now, Aoyama, because I'm going to skip uh bakugo for a second i want to do these they're like the you know main characters um aoyama you are the traitor i mean which in and of itself is very important in this final arc uh it leads into how we even get into the final battle uh this de the de deceiving deceiving all for one obviously that was a really really big thing to do i mean you had shinto's help and everything like that but aoyama had to really decide whether or not he was going to be hero in this arc, after everything that he's done throughout the series to hurt the students, he had to really decide like what he was gonna do and he ended up making the right decision. But I'm trying to think of like what his role is in the war as far as what we're gonna see this season. We probably will see like a scene or two of him, but he doesn't really have all that much to do during the actual war until later on. Um, but again, I can't I can't just deny the fact that he is the traitor. There is a whole traitor arc in this in this season. 
and he was extremely useful. I, I'm going to put him in substantial, actually. He was extremely useful in getting the entire war set up, right? Like, if it's not for Aoyama, again, these guys had no idea what they were going to do. So I'm just going to put him there. Now, Bakugo. I mean, it's really safe to say, honestly, right? Like, everyone else here had a pivotal role. Bakugo, if it wasn't for his efforts and, I mean, his awakening and everything... Things would have went much worse for all the people at the UA sky base, right? Like he really handled things not going according to plan very well, right? Like he, he was working like an expert under pressure and sure he needed to be saved a little here and there. And sure, eventually he really, really needed to be saved. Bakugo then gets up after being saved and proceeds to fight all for one. Like who does this guy think he is? He's just doing a lot. This entire arc, all of it is important, right? Because we have to bring his character to a close as well. And he, he's never really had his own main villain in this series or big fight. So it was amazing seeing Bakugo get like a, a big fight, like kind of not really a solo fight, but you know, he was, he was the lead in his situation for a bit. And then, yeah, obviously him, Mm, the moment he has against All for One is not going to be in this season. So he's not quite as pivotal as he would be if that was going to be included in this season. But I feel like it's okay. Like Bakugo definitely did enough to earn his spot as a, a pivotal character in this, this season. Like it's Bakugo. He's the secondary main character of the entire series. Obviously, he's going to be extremely useful, even if as a device for the plot, right? Like even just there, he is pivotal to the plot in this season. Then we have Deku. Deku obviously is going pivotal, right? He is the main character. This entire war is surrounding around him. Everything is about him and his quirk and all that stuff in the fight between him and Shigaraki. So obviously Deku is going to be pivotal. Deku went from, you know, getting taken over to the Toga area, dealing with that for a little bit, flying back over. He had a really, really busy time getting back to UA, seeing all the carnage, fighting Shigaraki, keeping Shigaraki from destroying like the island of Japan or UA or anything like that, keeping him in the sky, losing. Like he went through a lot in this arc um, and you can see it on him after the arc is over. I mean, as we get into the epilogue, you can really see the toll that this battle placed on him. But I feel like no matter where we end this season, I feel like there is a little bit of like a give and take of whether or not it's going to end after the battle against Shigaraki has like already progressed to a certain like like a lot or you know, you know what I mean like we don't really know where this season is going to end right necessarily but I feel like no matter where it ends Deku is going to already have shown that like he is one of the most pivotal characters that I could possibly put at the top of this list I might even have to make like a another tier to put him there because like Deku I mean, not in every series will your main character be pulled in so many different directions. I have so many different things, but Deku doesn't really have to deal with that all that much, right? Because I guess this look at this big cast of characters dealing with stuff on their own, not really needing him there. So that was pretty cool. So Deku, I'm going to keep him in Pivotal and we're going to go back down to All Might and All for One. All Might, I'm going to be real with you. All Might, I'm giving you substantial. Yes, you interrupted all for one from getting to Deku and Shigaraki and all that stuff. But I really feel, I really, really feel, right? Maybe this is just me having too much faith. I really feel like it wouldn't have been that big of a deal if all for one got over to where Shigaraki and Deku was. Like, it would have been annoying. Let me not say it wouldn't have been a big deal because obviously having to fight two all for ones at the same time is a big deal. So disclaimer, yes, that is a big deal. However, Deku ain't no like, he he was handling it, all right? Like Deku, I mean, maybe we don't know because half the battle was off screen, but I feel like Deku would have been able to hold his own long enough to have Shigaraki, uh, to have Bakugo join the battle. So it might not have been the end of the world. Sure, All Might causing a little bit of a distraction there was definitely needed, right? Like things were about to go pretty bad, I feel like if I remember correctly. Um, and he bought time for Shoto and Ida to not have to like literally run to where All for One was instead of where uh, Dobby was, obviously. And it's All Might, right? All Might, he better have played a substantial role in this arc or a significant role in this arc and been useful in some way. But ah, I'm okay with him being an A because, again, I don't feel like All Might should have had 
too much of a pivotal role to play in this arc, like overly dependent on All Might when we're trying to get across the message of like, you know, the, the next generation and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm prone to putting All Might just at the top here, but like, no, when you consider that that's just not really the place in the story that his character is at anymore. He had a substantial contribution, but I just, I don't know. And then finally, wow, we are done. Finally, 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 all for one. I mean, hmm. Let me think before I just throw him. Whoa, whoa, don't do that. Okay, before I just throw him in, um, I kind of like how he looks and made things worse. I'm keeping him there. I'm keeping him there. That's so dumb. I'm just keeping him there because it looks funny next to Koichi. He did make everything, everything, everywhere that he touched or went near or interacted with at all much worse. And I mean, you're just doing this over some like family dispute all for one. You have like this giant battle against all the people on Gunga Mountain Villa, a video that we've already like narrated the whole thing. You have this battle against Bakugo. You have this battle against All Might. You have the battle against Endeavor. Like all for one is fighting this entire arc right into the very end of the series. And then he goes out in the way that he does. And I, I really don't mind the way that all for one's character ends in the series. I, I felt like it was pretty touching, honestly, in some ways. Um, as dark and demented as he is, just seeing like specks of human in him, but then seeing like there's just parts of a human he just doesn't understand, right? And 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 having to grapple with that, and whatever, right? If the the very small amount that he actually did grapple with that, because all for one is a piece of shit human being. But yeah, I, I feel like obviously I'm like, I can't leave him there. Damn it. I want to leave him there for a screenshot and then actually so we're gonna leave him here for a screenshot real quick. One second. Uh, and then I'm going to actually put him in the place that he has to, he, he has to be substantial. No, he has to be pivotal, pivotal. Like half this war was about dealing with all for one. Like a good section of the war is, and a, and a major section of their resources is specifically targeted to just dealing with all for one. So I can't cap, I can't cap and put him in just made things worse. All for one is all for one. Right, like I, whether or not I agree with the way that you know everything ended with his like final attack and all that stuff, that's not even in this season, so it's not really even it's not really even a factor, right? But I feel like I don't know, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of digging this list, right? I feel like the characters were supposed to be at the very tip top or there, ain't eh, substantial. Like you know, characters next to each other don't look crazy. Like why the hell is Koragiri on the same tier as? Stain, you know, that that, that kind of makes sense to me. I feel like if anything, Dobby being down here at useful is not going to be, uh, be a very popular decision. I feel like some of these, obviously, anytime you put up a tier list, you, let, let's be honest, we're all just waiting for the one guy to go, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> Look at this dumbass list. You, everyone has horrible taste. So I'm just going to be waiting for it. I did not realize this was going to be two hours. It's done. There goes the tier list. Tell me it's shit, dude. Enjoy. Enjoy. Good night. Let me know.